Tonight on the edge, it was a daring rescue caught on camera and gone viral. And now the Macomb County deputies who saved a driver last month are being nationally recognized for their heroic efforts. Fox News' Lauren Edwards has more on their incredible story. We're doing our job. It's kind of like didn't seem anything different from any other day. It was a little more exciting and kind of afterwards I did think like, oh my God, we just did that. Oh my gosh, they did. Macomb County Deputy Nicole Myron jumped into a moving car while her partner, Deputy Anthony Gross, a trainee, drove theirs. I feel like I was just doing my job, just trying to help the community. And helped the driver who they say was having a medical emergency on Gratiot a few weeks ago in September. We're coming up to 16 mile road, which is a very heavy intersection. Um, he already went through a couple red lights before that. We didn't want to get him into that situation, so. So Gross pulled up next to him, matching his speed, which they say was five miles an hour. I just remember the car behind him, their head, they had their hazards on. We, I activated the lights and siren, try to get the vehicle, try to get their attention. It wasn't responding to it. Myron says once they got close enough, she tried to first break the window, but the driver, who they say was in a daze, was able to roll down his window. So the next step was to do the unthinkable, jump in on the driver's side. I think there was obviously a lot of, you know, risk to it, but I think with it being not many options, it was kind of what was going to work at the moment. And it did. She put the vehicle in park and got the man some help. Wednesday, the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund in Washington, D.C. named them Officers of the Month of September 2024. We're definitely grateful for all the, you know, appreciation for it and everything. And just here to do what we're supposed to do. They say since then they've gotten thank you cards from folks locally and from around the country, but they're humble and they say they were just doing their jobs. Yeah, it definitely feels good. I mean, I'm glad that, you know, we were able to actually help him and it, honestly other people on the road that day because who knows what else could have happened from that. Now that man did receive medical attention and as for the deputies, they say they took a, a picture for the award and say that it will be up on the organization's website soon. Reporting here in Mount Clemens, Lauren Edwards on the edge. A former Highland Township teacher appeared in court today accused of inappropriately touching young students at Spring Mills Elementary School. As you can imagine, the parents are outraged. They refused to tell me what my daughter was going through. It's heartbreaking to hear your child describe something like that. I mean, it's hard to get out of bed. It's disbelief, and I felt we needed help. 61-year-old Tim Daugherty is charged with six counts of second-degree criminal sexual conduct. Three minors testified against Daugherty, the former substitute teacher. The judge bounded him over to trial, which his lawyer calls disappointing because he maintains the standard of proof was too low. These three individuals liked this teacher. They um, all hugged him. They said everybody hugged him. All the hugs were done in the classroom. Some of the hugs were even in front of other teachers. Um, it wasn't until one of the other students found out or talked to her mother that said it might be inappropriate that all of a sudden they started to think that this was inappropriate touching. In a statement, Huron Valley Schools District says they will continue to cooperate with law enforcement and immediately remove Doherty from his position when they learn of the allegations. But some parents accuse the school of not protecting their kids. A predator alert tonight in Ferndale. Police are looking for a man who's going around groping women on the street. We started noticing a trend. There's been three separate incidents of an individual riding on a bike who has been uh, in a, inappropriately touching females. Females in Ferndale be on alert. Police have received reports from at least three women who say a man on a bike targeted them and touched them. What has been happening is the individual has been on a bike. He basically um, basically passes the female um, head on and once he you know identifies them, he basically circles back around and then grabs them and then flees and then flees the scene. The first incident was reported back in July at Vester and Woodward. When it happened again in August at Woodward and East Breckenridge, police realized there is a predator prowling the city. That's when we really started working harder um, and then we reached out to you all to help us hopefully identify this individual. Police obtained surveillance pics of their wanted man. The images are blurry but not entirely unidentifiable. I think this person has some pretty um, you know, distinct features that we can see in the pictures. It appears he has very long, wavy, curly hair, um, and he appears to be a black male, um, younger potentially. A 
third incident was reported just this past week in the area of Farmdale and West Troy. Police believe there could be other victims. If that's the case, we're asking those people too to come reach out to us. Until this man is caught, police offered this advice to women in Ferndale who are walking alone. We're really asking for residents, particularly females, when they're out walking their dogs, walking, running, whatever, to not be on their phones looking, to have situational you know, awareness, maybe only keep one earbud in so they can hear everything around him. Women who are feeling uneasy walking around town can call Ferndale police to assist them. And of course, if anyone knows the man on the bike, they are encouraged to call Ferndale PD. Well, Detroit police could use your help bringing a couple of crooks to justice. You can see two men break in and start snagging clothes off the racks at the store on Joy Road near Oakman. It happened Sunday around 5 in the morning. Police believe one man in his late 40s and the other is in his mid-50s. If you have any information about the burglary, call Detroit Police or Crime Stoppers at 1-800-SPEAK-UP. An unexpected pool guest in uh, Farmington Hills this week after the deer got caught in the water. But now it is safe and sound thanks to police and firefighters who came to the rescue and it was all caught on camera. Fox News' Dave Kinchin has a closer look. Come on, Jason. <laughs> Vicki Vance watched one of the strangest but eventually heartwarming things play out in her own Farmington Hills backyard Monday afternoon. Firefighters rescuing a deer that somehow got stuck in her above ground swimming pool, struggling there for about an hour. It was amazing. Our fire department and our police department were absolutely amazing. She was minding her own business at her Wildwood Trail residence when she heard the sound of something scratching outside. It's lucky it was a nice day, so... The doors were open, otherwise I wouldn't have heard it. And I heard it clink, 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 and I'm thinking the church behind me is doing something, like some decorating or something. And then I said, I heard it again. I go, I gotta go out and look. And then I saw him in the pool. I didn't know who to call when I heard the noise and I went outside and saw him struggling in the pool, put the ladder in there. He's looking at me going, um, no, that's not gonna work. I need some more help. So we called the police department and they sent out the fire department. Mm -hmm. Firefighters use some problem solving strategy, but had to get creative too, working with some rope and a piece of plywood to do the job. And one's a cowboy, he kept trying to, you know, and he did it, he reined him and got him around his midsection that he wasn't able to get out of. And the, the hero that was in the pool, he had the, one of those white, I don't know, lift things up and he put it underneath them and they all lifted him up on the board and they brought him to the ground and he ran off. Vicki thinks the deer jumped over her fence not knowing a pool was on the other side covered for the winter. She's just glad all ended well. It was amazing. I'm so thankful that they were all safe. The deer was safe. Mm -hmm. It was a little buck. I think it was like a year and a half, two years old buck. Mm. Yeah, he's adorable. And this was just one of 46 calls that Farmington Hills firefighters made in one day, showing just how busy they can be. Dave Kinchin on the edge. Well, the summer light temperatures have moved out, but it's still not bad out there for late October. No, you know what? Now is the time to get all those outdoor activities done. You're right. Get Why those, not? Get it's to fun. those leaves. They're starting to fall, Rich. Backyard cleanup. Well, he's out there all the time. time. I was out there today helping the neighbors. That's yep. for sure. It is a cooler pattern for us for tonight and for tomorrow, but we are going to see plenty of sunshine for your Thursday. You can see mostly clear skies. Detroit up to Traverse City, Chicago, and Milwaukee. How about some live pictures from Honolulu? 85 degrees. That's the beautiful Pacific Ocean out there. Boy, it looks nice with a cruise ship right in the center of the screen. Let me show you the numbers, the change in the last 24 hours. Some places in Michigan are down more than 30 degrees from this time yesterday, and that's a good indicator that that cold front is now well off to our east. 69 degrees, the official high today, 51 the morning low. Here are your averages, there are the records. Look at that, 22 degrees on this day back in 1969. Nothing like that kind of cold right now. It is uh, dropping off steadily in Lansing, 44 there, 50 in Monroe, 50 winds are 46 up there in Port Huron. The breeze is light, it's northerly, and that continues to allow colder air to filter in, 39 
29 in Ludington, 34 in Marquette, 50 in Chicago. Still pretty nice down in Charleston, West Virginia way, 64 degrees. High pressure comes right overhead tomorrow, so plenty of sunshine for Thursday. Then a fast moving system brings us rain showers on Friday. More high pressure builds in for the weekend, so you're going to like all that sunshine for Saturday and Sunday. Cooler for the rest of tonight, just a few clouds down to 39. Tomorrow's a good looking day, just not as warm as the last few. And then right there is the seven day forecast. Of course, we got the big game Saturday evening out in Ann Arbor. No problems. Lions at home Sunday and look at the warm up for next week. Group and tearing a full check at 4 a.m. Looks great. Thanks, Rich. Well, it's been nearly a month since Hurricane Helene ravaged the southeast. And today, an update from FEMA on recovery efforts over there in Augusta. FEMA's administrator says there are nearly 800 federal workers in Georgia. The agency has given out nearly $160 million to people recovering from the storm. In North Carolina, the governor there says the cost from damage has surpassed $50 billion. One thing is certain. No matter who is footing the bill, and especially if it's the taxpayers, we need to ensure that homes, businesses, water systems, and roads are rebuilt stronger to withstand future storms. Officials had originally reported 72 deaths in the Asheville area, but now say that number is 42, citing communication problems. Well, we are less than two weeks away from the presidential election and remarks by Donald Trump's former chief of staff is raising some eyebrows. Fox's Mike Emanuel has a closer look at what he said and the reaction it's getting tonight. Certainly, uh, the former president is in the far right area. He's certainly an authoritarian, uh, admires people who are dictators. Uh, he has said that. So he fa certainly falls into the, into the general definition of, of uh, fascist, for sure. In an interview with The Atlantic, John Kelly recounted how Trump told him he wanted generals that were loyal like Hitler's. Vice President Kamala Harris was quick to jump on Kelly's criticism. Donald Trump said that because he does not want a military that is loyal to the United States Constitution. He wants a military that is loyal to him. Retired Army Brigadier General Anthony Tata says Kelly's use of fascism is a cheap shot and dangerous. I am shocked that uh, uh, General Kelly has made these comparisons of Trump to Hitler when he knows they're not true. Uh, he knows that he's enabling uh, a Harris Walls ticket that would uh, continue to help the Middle East unravel and, and, and drive our enemies together. The Atlantic also referenced Mr. Trump inviting the family of 20 year old Army Private Vanessa Guillen, who was murdered at a military base in Texas, to the Oval Office. At at one point, the president offered to pay for her funeral. Then Atlantic sources suggest Trump blew up when he heard the price tag would be $60,000. A former Pentagon chief of staff says that is not true. He said if the military didn't pick up the tab, he would in its entirety. That's the commander in chief. Guillen's sister accused the Atlantic of exploiting her sister's death for politics and said, quote, President Trump did nothing but show respect to my family and Vanessa. In fact, I voted for President Trump today. Nick Ayers, a former chief of staff to then Vice President Mike Pence, called Kelly's commentary, quote, patently false. Now, some are raising questions about why stories reportedly from more than four years ago are being released less than two weeks from the election. In Washington, Mike Emanuel, Fox News.